we're not, as I say, doing this in conditions which are those of learning a subject matter. <laughs> and um, it is surprising the bias, one way or the other, in, in terms of these particular instruments, particular learning experiences, really. Because they're sort of, it takes to administer this thing, it takes to, to the Oscar Yard or so. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just like filling in figures or <laughs> something. Um, the, um, It's surprising that they're as quite as high as they are, actually, in a way. And I was a little worried by this, because Dan Lorillard, amongst others, and Nell Entwistle, and also um, Di Hounsel and people like that who are concerned with learning to learn, uh, had found, um, and we also found in Tilburg and later, a great deal, Bert Kelder and Tilburg, a great deal of uh, difference in the way concepts are applied. Uh, in different tasks, and according to Diane, people ought really to be um, specific in context, in style, but only in context, like the personality stuff, where you're depending on the context, right? you're a different kind of person. My terms, and my prediction, very strong prediction, is that uh, styles or forms of cognition uh, would the characteristic of P individuals, the psychological individuals to discuss, rather than characteristic of uh, persons, and that persons would in general contain various such P individuals, and not that they would be characteristic of persons. And uh, I therefore began to wonder what in the world was going on and reanalyze the data. And um, looked at the stories. I could only reanalyze it for those people who had told a story, because the criterion employed in this was that of whether or not the story could be categorized in the same or a different way for that presentation first and the second. If a change from first to second it had not been. Um, now, this was possible, I think, only for about 50 or 60 people out of a whole enormous batch of material from Edith and Vassana. And um, it was um, Bern Scott and Brown Lewis and Ali Curtis and others had worked on this with me for ages, George Mellon and um, Walter of people who mess. Um, and I had this, this uh, data, uh, Nias, and I just took the stories and got a few of the other fellows to classify them and myself, and agree, we agreed on a sensible classification. It looked as though some people had told stories about the spy rings or the smugglers, which were very much internal to the test. They felt themselves to be personally involved, to be inside the test, and at one point of view they adopt. In other stories, uh, were very definitely either analytical or looking on from the outside, uh, taking a, an impartial view of the proceedings going on in these organizations, both of which you can sort of identify with and uh, feel you could be part of, but even so, some people took this very analytic external point of view, some people took an internal, not necessarily part of a spy, somebody in the country uh, could easily be giving an account of what happened to the borders and so on, this kind of thing. Now, but I mean, that's an internal story. It's not too difficult to cut up the stories in that way in this particular case. There's nothing magical about it. It's merely whether there is a change of perspective or not. And we would also, of course, expect a perspective adopted to, in conversation theory, to be characteristic of a style. So what I expected, I hoped to find, was that the people who did not change perspective would have scores that were very highly correlated and incidentally I also did a study with Ron Atkins measures which is much better than a correlation study and uh, that indeed those who changed their perspective and acted as different P individuals on different occasions would have virtually no correlation that indeed turned out to be true. So according to the criterion of obtaining that data uh, those who changed, 
um, not, not changed. Those have changed, in fact, had sort of correlation coefficients of the range between 0 0.8 0.95, which is not a psychological common figure. Uh, and um, those who did not accounted for nearly all the variance in the sample and had correlations in the order 0.3, no less than that, 2 something, 2, I don't know what 2, 7 was. To um, 0. Um, 6 at most, 5, 5, 8, 5, 9, I don't know, say 5, 9 or 6. Uh, so indeed, that accounts for very little of the variance. It accounts, I think, accounts for uh, very little of the variance is taken up in the people who have the same perspective. And by hypothesis, by that hypothesis, our flat reason to be identified as playing the same role, being the same P individual, and an enormous amount of difference occurred between roles, which is very gratifying because Dan had found the same thing in, in learning styles exhibited in not so much in school study or university studies, in self-study by university students of tricky subjects, mm -hmm. and so do we, very similar things. Uh, and what she alludes to, and it's really a different way of putting the same sort of thing, that uh, a person in context is a different kind of person. And we also had some other data on design, which showed that if one kind of design, which I think I mentioned at the ARI, namely the design of an electronic circuit, uh, people, you know, people, people can stick to a style, and frequently do, because it isn't really, as a matter of fact, design. In designing an intruder alarm system, on the other hand, it really is a design, and they take different roles of being an intruder, of being an owner, etc., or whatever of the property. And it's a real thing they're protecting, you know, a real, they're doing a, a job of intruder protection. And it, it, the whole thing was actually supervised, and we used quite a number of, of uh, security engineers. Could, yeah. could we just look back over this, this little data? Uh, mm -hmm. From a slightly different, with a with a different question in mind, mm -hmm. yep. relative to that original uh, request of Heinz's about always coming back to the subject of sure. language. Yeah. How does this put through that filter? Well, what I'm saying here, given some empirical data, uh, I'm saying here is that the you'd expect that the uh, dialect of a few individual was different. Uh, the esoteric language of different peer individuals differed somewhat. They had different shared beliefs and common assumptions. Mm -hmm. um, we find that in design, which is genuine design, this is manifest even in one person. So the different constituent peer individuals, which are roles indeed they adopt or jointly are adopted, in fact, would best put it, because many of them exist in several people and are contingent upon person context or a personal identification context. Uh, uh, in design, this happens. In learning, there's a surprising bias to adopt the same dialect, even though it's inappropriate for the persons at hand. What do you mean by dialect in this um, I guess sub-language, uh, idiom, idiomatic, certain idiomatic usages, uh, certain I use the word dialect because it suggests a change of accent, but I, I don't really mean a change of accent, I, I mean a change of meaning of the words and a change of connotation and possibly a different vocabulary of words, uh, at least in some part, and the special usages which are reserved uh, for words or gestures, whatever, any natural language like in the sense I've discussed, uh, image, and in fact that uh, uh, this this stuff can be taken as, as a, a considerable essay into the dialects that are and are not used in that broad sense of the word, and about the sharp changes in dialect that occur in certain tasks and do not occur in others, and about uh, the earlier stuff, of course, can be interpreted, I think, quite reasonably in terms of using a strategy uh, appropriate to a dialect and inappropriate to any dialect. Of 
on that person. Uh, and um, the whole of this, of course, is an attempt to show that the prediction that P individuals were characterized by styles rather than people on the whole, and P individuals, there would be probably several in each person, there would necessarily be several in each person, and probably uh, there would be uh, many social entities of precisely this kind, which indeed there are, uh, especially in teams and groups, um, it's a study of the appearance of, of these phenomena. Uh, it's done in a rather cake-handed way in order to be journal publishable because the idiom of journal is not amenable to, to writing up things other than in this interlingua called statistics. Uh, and uh, otherwise it's called clinical data. Well, I, have, I have no objection to clinical data. I, I much prefer it. But on the other hand, uh, the journals on the whole prefer what they call factual data. Uh, yeah. That raises uh, maybe another way of addressing, <coughs> stepping back one layer back there, to the match mismatch. Yeah, well, that is uh, what I was talking about. Yeah, it's the same. Uh, well, we all of these are, all of these are studies of phenomena. In a mismatch situation, you have a uh, teaching and learning, uh, teachers and learners, yeah. learners using different dialects. And really that is not, correct. Not well, essentially, even different languages, the dialects are so different, the different sub languages. So we really can start talking about oh, it. Yeah. In, in oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Absolutely. All of this work is to do with that. It is concerned entirely with that. And the possibility of having it so concerned, and other sorts of things, like, for example, in planning, you can make reasonable uh, predictions about how people in the context of planning will operate, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. But you can't, because you know what kind of, kind of dialect they're going to use, what kind of P individual they're going to be when they're planning. So you, you could say here that, that the mismatch situation mm -hmm. you have there is, is, is a, another way of describing that is an attempt to have a conversation in two different languages. That's correct. Without necessarily mm -hmm. knowing how to That's absolutely correct. In fact, what is being learned by the mismatch student is apparently in a different language. And uh, it is, of course, perfectly good learning, and it can be investigated. The recall of the details of the experimenters and splodges on textbooks and cracks on tables and water glasses lying around and a can of beer or something. And, you know, it's all, it, it, it's, it, it, it's all to do with that. And um, the um, planning is against use of uh, complex decision-making, again, is a case in point. That, mm -hmm in complex decision making entails a lot of dialects, whereas planning need only entail one uh, in, some, in many people. Okay? And these are all studies of detail. Okay. Um, now, let's go on uh, to see how you can make sense of this thing, and I, I think go on to what that contraption, these contraptions are about. And what Jeffrey is, is currently doing, I imagine, I'm not quite sure, um, with some horrendous machine. Um, and um, corner there. And uh, the things are generically called thought sticker installations. And they handle what I call proto language, I alluded to earlier, I think. L sub P, in which you would express what? Many languages, let's say L1, L2, all of which are conversational languages, and as distinct, incidentally, from a meta language, which I will consistently refer to as L star, as used by an outside observer to look at such situations. So L sub P is a crude language. And it is based upon coherence, by which I mean strictly coherence in the application of concepts, or coherence in a dynamic extension of Resch's logical coherence. Coherence value. Uh, uh, coherence truth, essentially. Um, and um, it's a considerable extension, actually, into the process domain of Resch's thing, of distinction, 
In other words, if I say certain things cohere or stick together, which models an agreement in our previous sense in that other piece of the paper, and Elsa P and so on are used in that other page or all those other pages, uh, you have to add enough distinction to keep the things that are unities apart. So if you say, I agree that something coheres, uh, it's comparable to that, that makes sense in the context of that, and take, say, a, this is it's an office, all right, well, there are various ways of, of talking about an office. Uh, say an office contains, uh, generally speaking, chairs, uh, generally speaking, a manager, uh, generally speaking, it contains desks, uh, working services, and the windows. Uh, it's always, nearly always in a building. Um, it contains some guy who is called the accountant. It contains some guy who is called boss or whatever. Um, um, somebody who is a PA or whatever, often, not necessarily. Uh, somebody else comes along with the definition of an office. And you ask what is an office? An office is a rectangular enclosure uh, formed of modules five, six, seven, or something. And uh, you're talking, of course, of the same thing, uh, really, because you've got a kind of modular design of an office, and other people have an atmosphere of an office in mind. Good architects do, for example. You say that these things make sense together to form an office. In saying office is, is composed of these. Uh, tables, chairs, managers, accountant, staff, etc. Uh, you don't mean that the notion of a manager, you don't allow the notion of a manager to evaporate in the coherence of an office. <laughs> okay? You, uh, you intend the manager and chair to desk, working service, accountant, PA, and so on to be reta retain their identity as a distinct concept. They are now glued into some other concept that you've expressed in there. But that concept also is somehow pivotal because uh, it, it is to the effect that uh, that concept, um, that is why the distinction occurs. In other words, uh, if I put these things together, uh, these managers and chairs and so on, concepts of managers, chairs and so on, and their application, which may or may not overlap with other concepts, uh, with other people's concepts or other p individuals' concepts, um, they don't, by, because of that coherence, agreement or steam together, have to lose distinction. The other quality is, of course, that uh, the office, which I will allude to as a thing called capital letter T, I'm going to use unsubscripted T's here because there are a couple of senses of concept and. Uh, Namely, there's the, the idea of a personal concept, somebody's concept, or in my case, some P individual's concept of something. And uh, there is also a public concept in the sense of either a public to a private language, an overlap of several of these, or even in the sense of a population of P individuals uh, inhabiting a brain and being called a person. Uh, you, you, you don't have, on the one hand, a, a loss of distinction due to coherence. You do have applicability, so you have process preserved. And I'm now talking in terms of uh, a notation which I'm deliberately going to explain as it could cause confusion in respect to the other way. Thank you very much. The other pages. Uh, namely, um, I'm going to use the public concepts the letter T, and I'm going to mean by public concepts, not just the T which is shared by some collection of P individuals, psychological individuals, groups, societies, whether they inhabit single brains or inhabit a group of people or a, a society or a form a system of beliefs like Imre Lakatos's uh, schools of scientific research, which are self-perpetuating, reproductive, and to some extent productive, but tend to be isolated as unities by having um, um, a dissonance which rejects data contrary to their mores or converts them to affirmative data. Um, programs of research carry on, experiment fails according to their own falsification criteria. Try a different experiment, more explicit one. In fact, 
Now, these public concepts I think we to represent by capital letters without any subscript. So, whereas previously I used things like T sub A uh, for a particular P individual, or T sub B, mm -hmm. and wrote down things like um, the execution or application of con A T goes into T A, okay? and then talk about an overlap of T A and T B. Here I'm just going to use the capital letters to designate concepts. And I don't mean by these simply the capital letters, in other words, the description which the behavior is generated under application or execution. I mean also that they be attached uh, some sort of con T to this. So when I'm talking about T, I'm not just talking about a shared description, but a shared class of procedure, of, of understanding to deal with. Now, well, let's examine these terms, what our pictures of office might look like, or say, the concept of office. Uh, uh, and here I'm talking about a shared amongst a certain public, mm -hmm. um, especially because I think the picture is uniform between psychological individuals, so it could be shared in the languages of the brain, or they could be shared in anything serving as a natural language, which is also a medium for the execution and the, well, the application, no properly called, and the descriptive aspect of the concept. So I'm going to assume that attached to each of these now, these letters now, I uh, have got a thing called which is the shared procedure that goes along with it, okay? And this exists in some language, L, which can be any of these. Uh, in particular, it exists in LP. In other words, it can be imaged in LP. And I'd like to look at some of these notions, such as how we put together concepts in one sort or another, as we did before, in terms of L sub P notation. I'm going to use um, an older notation because it, it's still under, under development and I think this is a very, very active and very intriguing field of research. And um, I don't know whether you've got a picture of Thought Sticker. Do you have a picture of Thought Sticker? Um, of the early ones, I don't think. The is there one in here? Yeah. I think there's a picture in here, it doesn't matter. Just to, there is, for example, you can use fairly liberal interfaces, very liberal interfaces, to um, exteriorize uh, public concepts uh, and to form what are called entailment meshes, mm -hmm. which are, in other words, statements in L sub P. Um, you, can, you don't need to use this equipment, incidentally, but it's uh, very advisable to, otherwise uh, it's virtually impossible to keep track of it. And, to manipulate actively the L sub P statement. I don't know where how it's got to, somewhere in this account. Um, and um, I'd like to examine an office as made up of one point of view. An office is made up of a P with a Q and an R. So let's say it, uh, an office has a manager working surface uh, uh, and uh, space and uh, all the other things you like doesn't matter we could have money more than that or on the other hand it's made up of modules which can be conceptualized um, and uh, this is a sort of structural image of an office uh, which I will call uh, S U okay now, notice that the makeup of this public concept uh, is different from makeup of this one. Uh, what's that? Uh, put it down. Ah, uh, sorry, S. U. In several ways. First of all, its constituents are different. It overlaps on just the notion of topic, concept, concept, or. I will call it actually a topic, a public language concept, to incorporate this notion. And the, um, first of all, this picture 
has got uh, consisting of five or four elements. It's got four topics which make up whatever it is, which in some sense are necessary to the coherence called office in one aspect of one mind or in one person's mind. It isn't unique uh, because it's made up also a three adic relation of coherence. This is a four adic one, and it could be a hundred adic. <laughs> Very frequently, is in fact my, my own personal haverings about an office a moment ago, I think was perfectly natural, and it was about uh, contained a dozen or so constituents, even a very crude uh, indication of what I would mean by an office, and uh, by no means typifies every office, of course. Uh, next, you can make them overlap. So these forms, uh, which are somehow identifiable by having a boundary drawn around them, the notation wells of P, called collective. Rather than sometimes happen in the literature and dates it, uh, many, and this sort is called distributive. The which is collective? Uh, sorry, the distributive is this one. Distributive. Th these are collective. This is a distributive form. And it might have an indefinite number of distributive components on it. And um, L, N, N, uh, uh, I, G, J. I mean, uh, that is easy. Now, um, one could also take. Um, other concepts, in fact all concepts probably, have similar qualities until they form a certain cohesive bundle called a, a individual, uh, or in fact a socially identifiable role or personality. Somebody, and uh, for example, gets things sticking on here, H, um, M, and um, down here for example, X and Y, and there may even be connections back. I think that one isn't going to forget, but is, yes, it can. Z in that. Um, so you can get cyclic structures as well, and often do. I believe I've drawn a legal one on that, as a matter of fact, but I'm not sure. Could you repeat that um, comment that you just made a moment ago? That was a very nicely succinct, almost uh, epigram about all concepts uh, have similar cohesive quality. Until they form a certain collective whole, you said. Mm. One of those, one of those things I had on the blackboard, on um, we were discussing conversation theory, which uh, of which, which is a minimal conversation and constitutes part of a p individual. Or something else you said that went on to talk about personality. And well, like I said all personality, a social persona, role, recognizable role, because in the shared concepts, the public concepts. These things are characterizations of sorts of actors, sorts of identity, sorts of society, sorts of person, even, often loosely called sorts of person, meaning in fact a certain feature or pattern of person. Uh, and um, we can, of course, recognize people by their shape and so forth. There's no reason why we shouldn't do actually, it's perfectly good. But we know that if we do that, then they will have different moods or attitudes or different personae which may vary a great deal or may not vary a great deal, may, uh, may, some of them may be mutually dependent upon similar personae and other people, able to fill the joint row, some of which are not, some of which can be supported in the same brain, uh, some of which require, uh, in the very broad sense of language, a linguistic interaction. With another cognitive organization, or conceptual organization, I prefer, I just don't believe in this pure cognition stuff at all. I was just stopping to ask about that because I understood the uh, the growth out of the cohesion of uh, these concepts to form a P individual. Yeah, sort of that is right. But it, you, weren't, one, you weren't going on to suggest that personality is another aspect of that. Uh, it is, a, it is a, a P individual is a personality. Okay. Uh, and um, it is a one of the personalities of somebody. Because I don't believe that people have one personality. 
uh, in all contexts. Uh, I think there are better ways psychologically of identifying people than that. I'm not denying that I walk around and I have a brain and I have certain persona I can play and certain roles which are dependent on others, some which are not, um, meaning that I can play them in apparent isolation or internally in my head or whatever, others for which I am highly dependent on a social context or something. Uh, it's perfectly all right to identify me as a piece of medium walking around in this enormous flux of, of what I call natural language, and the medium is no different, really, to the processing medium of natural language. Why, why, why it is natural language as against the formal language? In formal, in the tatty sense, I don't mean formalized. LP, for example, is a formalization, and doesn't mean sloppy, but. Uh, in the sense of formal linguistics, you very frequently lose this characteristic of, of language, and certainly in the context of AI, you do entirely. Uh, it's completely evaporated, and you lose it in various ways. Uh, one is to insist upon uh, a, a truth evaluation of statements very often, mm -hmm. um, which is only concerned really with uh, certain aspects of certain corners of the universe, where the truth evaluation criteria are agreed, uh, true or false, can be uttered in respect to a datum, in respect to some measurement, which is an agreed measurement, and some particular type of corner of really the language, a corner of the universe, if you like. Uh, of many, I mean, there are many universes permeated by this language, and I use the universe here in the sense of a universe of discourse or a universe of type of physical or concrete characteristic equally well. I don't intend to be stuck with either one or the other. And um, it, just, it, it, it does not seem appropriate inside physics to um, examine uh, the, the, the temperature of an emotion uh, or um, the uh, agreeability of a datum. Uh, the um, so I mean, it, 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 if you have a thermometer or something, it's sensible enough to talk about temperature and to say the thermometer has measured the temperature to be as I conjectured for this other thermometer or something like that. Uh, and uh, you know, there are worlds where thermometers are useful, worlds where they aren't particularly useful, where they do indicate a valuable um, datum of some sort. You know, worlds in which they're utterly inappropriate for measurement. I don't put thermometers in. In, in, into, into, into love or something. It's ridiculous. I mean, it doesn't have a temperature mm -hmm. uh, any more than a datum has a, an agreeability if it's a datum. Uh, I mean, it shouldn't have because it's meant to be somehow impartial. I think I would well say that result is quite disagreeable to me as, as a person or as a peer individual acting as a, as a scientist. Uh, but in the scientific role, I can't actually say that if I am being a scientist at that stage, you know, otherwise I'm in that particular part and haven't slipped from that part into a part looking at my existence as a scientist or something. There would be a, a considerable degree of consistency then in, in terms of the, the role or the, the key individual in the same context. Um, there appears. Oh uh, no, not completely. But it grows, but it grows in a rather regular manner. And now it's just according to a certain style. And uh, really, in a sense, the styles are about take the constituent p individual wholly or partly accommodated in this head, and um, keep them so that they may maintain that internal conversation we had sketched out before. With, if you remember, I used the notation s. Something like that, I think, uh, S, that, and a minimal conversation between them as constituting a peer individual. And um, that is the bundle which we have, and that, of course, speaks also to other things like that. <laughs> and they may be, uh, I believe that brains are full of whole populations of these on the whole. And, um, they are very linked together, but equally well, if you wanted to carve the cake, not in terms of brains, but in terms of uh, institutions or um, beliefs or, or personalities or roles, 
you can equally well uh, put boundaries around whole collections of people or people together with machines or industries or whatever. I mean, for example, Stafford does a lot of this. I think in his stuff, he doesn't really take mass far enough. He ought to go further, you know, my, my complaint about this. He ought to formalize it more so he could actually do more with it. Uh, in in not, uh, I don't mean in practical terms, we can do a lot, but uh, it is important at some stage in practice to formalize what you're up to in enough detail to talk about say a firm as a, an organization, as, a, as an entity, as a unity, and certainly to have a, a theory which, insofar as you're going to manipulate, it can be manipulated and does accommodate this remarkable thing, consciousness, which is the information transfer between these things, uh, there's a degree of it. And Stafford talks about it somewhat differently as a variety of transfer action. And, um, but it is talking about much the same things. And, um, it, um, is this reaction to have some formalism that you can operate with. And, uh, I think most of what he's up to actually is very compatible with this. Nearly all of it, I'm a very old friend. No, no. Most, nearly all of it is, but it have a different sort of idiom for expressing it. And I would claim that Stafford's idiom has a limitation in certain respects, uh, because it doesn't formalize, and if it were formalized, I think it would come to the same thing. Well, now he doesn't particularly want to formalize, he's perfectly capable of doing so. I mean, obviously, he's a much more able philosopher and mathematician, I think, than I am, but he doesn't, he doesn't have, have a wish to do so, and he hasn't found it practically important to do so. And um, this is a point I can well see. Um, that, um, I have found it necessary to formalize essentially what's being talked about here. That I can construct some sort of edifice in terms of formalism. Uh, and um, I would hesitate to say predict. I think prediction is often completely unwarranted, but forecast. And forecast in what is the tricky question we discussed earlier, the basis of the whole conversation theory. Um, so you need that formalism for the dynamics of the thing. You also need another formalism for dynamics, as I've shown a moment. Maybe you need the sort of formulation, form, formalism of a generator, proto-language, of process, distinction, coherence, or something equivalent, dependence. Uh, which um, uh, generates expressions such as this. So this thing can be called a collective expression. It's an office. Collective. Yeah. One collective concept of an office. And this thing would be And uh, there's nothing magical about the binary things here. It's not meant to be binary. Uh, I'm going to put L down here just to ensure that it's never interpreted as being necessarily sort of binary, a uh, typical distributive. And that, that these expressions can be made legal insofar as I can convert them into in some topology, and that's the question you got around with, execute them, um, or more properly, apply them as LP expressions. So, for example, if you ask me to give an action equivalent to that, I'd be able to say, well, to learn a T, or, yeah, to learn a T, you, you, you learn about P and Q, okay? and put them together to make a T, uh, which I would represent by... Uh, likewise, to learn about a P, according to that form up there, I would call that form A, shall we, just for illustration, it is A. These things are called prunings. And it is B. Uh, another one of A would be this. Another one way would be that. Which shows immediately we've got a self-referential system. And 
But that doesn't matter, it's not viciously so. Uh, it's self-referential, it's other, other referential, but it isn't viciously circular. It is circular, of course. Um, and here, of course, I have a slightly different situation because I could get learn about a P, a T by, by way of P and Q, or I could learn about a T also by way of R, S, and L. Um, but of course, I could learn about a P by means of a Q. And a T, and I learn about a T in turn, of course, and I'll say it's, it's implicit in the expression by means of an R, S, and an L. And this, of course, exists for all P, Q, R, S, L, T in any coherent cluster. And in fact, to be able to write such a pruning is a prerequisite for the legitimacy of a coherent expression. Um, the other prerequisite is that um, there is no such thing as a T alone, this is why I was insisting a moment ago, but there is such a thing as a T alone attached to a class of models. Okay. In other words, there are working models, and these are dynamic, active, dynamic models. Processes, in fact. In other words, when I was talking about every T in this notation having a, a con T attached to it, it's got something like that attached to a public concept. And that can exist, but it's, it doesn't really exist in isolation. The only one that exists in isolation is, a, is this unique thing called conversation, which in the middle of variety of which I define as a PN individual. And that thing actually has an integrity on its own. Um, now, however, the other expressions are writable, they're legitimate in L sub P. We can identify P individuals in L sub P as well as minimal units able to converse. We can come to in a moment. Now, when I, I'd just like you to be sure you know what this is all about. Could you please, Elena, would you mind giving me a pruning under Q of the, no, pruning under R, let us say, mind Q if you like, of this expression. Under R probably would be the, the S and L would be going to the R. Okay. L. Anything else? And the T. And the T. Mm -hmm. Would you mind continuing the pruning? And then you could go ahead and have the T being the P. Well, you'd have to, wouldn't you? Otherwise, you haven't pruned it. Okay. So it's very simple. Indeed. And all this.